I met a gypsy. So talk about Tom a little bit. It's been pretty cool to see yeah. his, his change this year. Yeah, but first of all, the whole where he comes from, what he's done, like two times world champion, just like me, and then moved to America right after that. It's it's almost like what I've done, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it's I love I love seeing that. Um and that's why I want to help him. Um you know, he won Daytona just like me. That his very first supercross race. That's uncanny. Win. Yeah. And then I look back at the result that was in 2013. So I won Daytona, my very first. Then we went to Toron- Toronto, I think, and I won. Next weekend. Yeah. So which he, which which he, he did, did in Birmingham. And then the following weekend, we went to, I think it was Indy, and I won. So three in a row. I never won before, and I won three in a row. Well, he got second <laughs> in Indy. But still, he made a lot of progress. Um, we had three good weeks here in California. <clears throat> um, and I, I don't like. I feel like there's it's little things, but super important on the riding. Um, I made a little bit of changes on his bars length. Um, you went bar a bit, mounts, bit but, wider. No, shorter, shorter. Okay. Um, I just felt like his bars were way too big for him. Yeah. Um, so bar mounts posi- position. Um, he was used to something that. I was not a big fan, so I, I changed that. And it was really hard to make those changes because he's not a guy that would make big changes. Every time you change something, he's like, well, wow, it's it's different. So he gets a little worried or he doesn't want that. But I was able to do that. Um, a couple things uh, here and there on the track and the the finger on the clutch, I told him. And he's much better in the whoops. Oh, so little things like that. Uh, really helped and I'm really happy to see him more confident riding a supercross yeah because he was a savage in Europe (laughs) like the championships he won like he was a savage yeah you know so it's like you high expectations to come over here for sure and it was for him a big change because not as big as me because I was not that close of a team uh, when I was in Europe because like we mentioned I was uh I was in France. I had my mechanic bringing the bike to France and I would practice and we didn't do a lot of testing on all that. But him, he was based in Belgium where the the team is based um, all the time with the team. So he had engineer at the track, his trainer, probably team manager often. So he was very used to like do the testing and used to like what they wanted on the bike and all that. So when he moved to America, it's a totally different team. You have to race Supercross. I don't know. One example is the the, the triple clamps. Like whatever he would run in Europe, then here, no, you have to go different triple clamps because of Supercross. That would help you in the whoops or that. So you would get lost on that and not used to it. So there was so many little things like that that you had to adjust. Um, and then when you went to outdoors, it was the same thing. So finally he got better at the end of outdoors and he got a, a podium or two, so which was great. How different are the bikes when you do come from Europe to like the I, I feel like KTM's probably a brand that they're not like the factory bike that you're on probably isn't like that much different to the bike here. Am I wrong in saying that or is it quite different? It definitely looks the same, but it it has some stuff that is different, yeah. Okay. Uh, setting wise here in the US dude we only pretty much only ride supercross honestly right so we spend what from November to August yeah supercross and then you do three months of outdoors so at the end um, they have their settings here for outdoors and stuff but it didn't really match what um, uh, Tom wanted so well I feel like Europeans just run way softer suspension outdoors just because we're so used to supercross here Mm. so we translate to a motocross it's getting better it's changing but yeah it was more more like stiffer riding outdoors because we're so used to a supercross bike yeah and in europe all they ride is outdoors so they have their their stuff dialed in for sure yeah but and so like tom just couldn't run the suspension that he would run in 
Europe, essentially. Just like, ah, oh, this was a setting I used in Europe. Like, can I just run it here? Or it just doesn't Yeah, that's kind of like what he did. But later in the season, uh, uh, okay. he just thought maybe, yeah, let's let's try what you guys have. And it was decent, but then he got better at the end because he, when he had uh, different settings. And, you know, at the end, he was like, I just want my bike that I had in Europe. And... Um, and it was maybe not exactly like he had, but closer and he felt comfortable because he it's just a being used to something. Mm. And he did three years over in Europe, three, four years of almost the same bike. Yeah, almost the same bike. Yeah. yeah. And then you have to move to America and you have to ride a supercross bike. Mm. You know? That's that's a lot lot different. So how do you how are you feeling about him for the championship? To be honest, I didn't expect him to be in that position. Really? No way. Dude, before the season started, um, you look at all the names behind the gate. McAdoo. Uh, how many years he's done? McAdoo. You a know, lot. At this level, like quite a bit. Yeah. So McAdoo, you have NST. Look how good he was last year. So you're like, he's going to be good. Uh, Pierce Brown, he's done many years. He's going to be good. I'm I'm missing a few. You got Deegan. Mm-hmm. Uh, who else? Like you already have four. So to get on the podium, it's gonna be tough. Yeah. Um, and then off, unfortunately, uh, the first round he got pushed in a, on the first uh, turn and he crashed. So he lost a lot of points. But man, after that, he got his very first podium on the on Supercross, and then he won Daytona. Daytona was the best track for him. I mean, yeah, that was not a Supercross track. It was so soft. Like, did you see the rhythm section? It was all, f- all almost like flat. Yeah, yeah. I told him, I said, don't try to like triple things or whatever. Like, try to stay low. There was a table in the middle where like people obviously would like hit the table and go like over oh, a single, single yeah. right? I said, just go table. <laughs> it sounds ridiculous. Yeah. But he would make the end of the rhythm like way better. Yeah. And he did that. And that was awesome. He was consistent, and it's it's little things like this that I'm trying to help, and uh, and it worked out great. Um, and then he goes to uh, Birmingham. Birmingham, it rained. They didn't build whoops. Okay, there was no whoops, but it was a freaking super track. Yeah, with rats, with triples, and all that. And and he won, and he was so smooth. So it's all about him right now. He's not a rider that would send it or you know just uh, on the rear fender or whatever. He's really precise and, and and technical and but what i see from last year and he's um he's pushing more and and rhythms in indie were rutted and stuff and you could see like he would like pull on the bars to make sure he would clear the triples like mm. like he would push more and he's more confident um did you see that on off like on on off yeah, yeah. that was pretty tough so i believe last year he would have struggled through that yeah, so and he's be like, a little yeah, tense, he- hesitant. Is it ten and yeah. not go for it? Yeah. And this year, he every single lap he would do it, and even in press day, he said, "Dude, did you see the on on off? That pretty tough, huh?" I said, "Yeah, it's tough, but you see how good you're doing it. Mm. Like, just do it. Like you, you're capable." So yeah. he's made a lot of progress, and I'm really trying to help him. Um, what we talked about for Jet, just uh, know where you can push. And know where you have to be calm and and smooth. Yeah, no, it's cool, man. It's yeah. been it's been really cool watching yeah. the progression and just <clears throat> seeing that guy. And you know, for American fans that don't watch as much MXGP, like when that when that no. dude's on, like he's on. Yeah, people are probably like, "Who the hell is that?" <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, if you don't follow MXGP and you like, you know, here in America and just watching uh, races, you're like, "Who is that?" <laughs> yeah, and I think to win a world championship especially in the 250 class. Like, it's just, there's so much talent. Like, it's just crazy, crazy. A lot of races too. Yeah, and so... Now, I think they have like 19 or 20 GPs now. It's insane. It's eh? a very, very long series. Yeah. So to be a guy that can win a title, win two titles, like, you've got to be a real... Yeah. And what I like... Oh, it was funny too. Like, I remember when you won uh, Daytona, you know, I'm like... uh, Because he passed Deegan, he passed Hamaker, he passed McAdoo, and then he won. Like... And then he says, oh, yeah, when I got into the lead, I was I was like, 
oh, that's perfect. And I felt super comfortable. And I'm like, okay. He says, yeah, I'm so used to leading in GPs. Yeah. Dude, if I lead a race right now, I'll be like, <laughs> like, you know, like. Shitting. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, dude, dude, dude. Like, I got to make sure I do yeah. it perfect. But him, it was like, oh, yeah. As soon as I got into the lead, I was like, okay, this is, this is fine. This that's is good. normal, yeah. Yeah, this is normal. I'm like, sweet, good for you, dude. Let's, <laughs> let's lead more race and you'll yeah. be killing it. Yeah. And that's what he did the next weekend. He started second and I think he went. Oh, yeah, he started second in Birmingham. And he was side side by side with uh, J Mart. Yeah. And and he hit a triple in the middle that he's never done all all, all day long. And he told me that. He said, Oh yeah. Um, I felt I felt good like off the start. And I said, Oh, I have to hit that triple to get into the lead. And he did it. And he went around J Mart and he was leading. And he was great. So I guess he's so used to lead in GPs that he's comfortable leading. That is so, wild to think. Yeah, good for him though. It's a, <laughs> it's a good um, good thing to do. We're excited to announce the launch of our new membership site, gypsytales.com, packed with exclusive content and perks that you won't find anywhere else. This is your chance to become a part of the Gypsy Gang. And as a special bonus, if you sign up to an annual membership, you'll be entered into the draw to win our custom-built TC125. Gypsy Gang.